So in his epistle at Patrem Dine of uh, 1642, the car reported that, as uh, I quote, so please see the first quotation on the screen, that a certain doctor of medicine read my dioptrics and meteors when they were first brought to light, diligently gathering them and deducing other things from them. He was of such a sagacity that within a few months, he then prepared a complete uh, physiology. So in this text, the car seems to refer to the year 1637, 1638, when Regius was appointed as extraordinary professor of theoretical medicine and botany at Utrecht in July in 1638. And according to a letter of Regius to the card of August 1638, Regius was appointed as he already successfully lectured to private students on philosophy and medicine, uh, which he based on Descartes' idea that he learned from Enricus Reneri and upon their publication in, in June uh, 1637 from Descartes on essays. Moreover, at the time Regius had already written a physiologia aimed at his private lectures and that sent to Descartes some very short notes, as he put it, of his on uh, Vittore Trincavelli and labeled them as medical essays, now lost. <clears throat> so that we may suppose that Regius completed this, uh, as Descartes put it in 1642, whole physiology or complete physiology in circa one year, after which Descartes had a direct acquaintance of Regius' work in 1638. Actually, the contents of such notes are beyond our grasp, but given the fact that, first of all, physiology usually included natural philosophical topics, such as a theory of elements, and second, that Regius built it upon, according to Descartes himself, on his uh, Dioptrica and Meteora, Regius certainly developed ideas on physics as well, besides on the study of the human body and the conditions of uh, health, namely the proper objects of medical physiology. <clears throat> Actually, references to Regius Physiologia recur in the following years. In spring 1639, Regius sent to Descartes some, I quote, short propositions touching physiology. Uh, being almost finished with this work uh, at that when he sent them, while in May 1640, he, Regius reported his students pressed him to publish his uh, physics having in the meantime started to lecture on physical topics as such, namely on Aristotle Problemata. And eventually in May 1641, the car wrote Regius that, I quote, so please see the second quotation. I remember that I read many things in your uh, physical compendium, compendium physicum, completely alien to the common opinion which are barely proposed there without any added reasonings by which they can be made uh, probable to the reader. I deem that this can be tolerated in theses where often paradoxes are gathered in order to give a broader matter of disputing to the adversaries. However, in a book which you seem to want to propose as a prodrome of the new philosophy, Prodromus Nove Philosophiae, I deem that, this, that it is to be done completely the opposite, namely reasons are to be provided by which you persuade the reader of those things that you want to conclude are true before that you expose such things in order that, that they do not offend uh, the reader with their novelty." So end, of, end of quotation. In fact, Regius had in the meantime, namely from April 1641, started to preside over a series of disputations, Physiologia Sive Cognitio Sanitatis, a series of disputations taking place until December 1641 and then resumed and completed, completed in uh, March, March, June uh, 1643. Well, as reconstructed by Telfer Beck, Regius held these disputations partly in order to meet the desiderata of Gisbertus Voetius, who became rector at Utrecht on uh, 11 March uh, 1641. 
Weizu suggested Regius to publish his book, his book on natural philosophy instead of giving disputations which could uh, arise some problem within the university given their peculiar academic nature. And upon Regius insistence, Weizu's allowed him to preside over disputations albeit on medical topics with the occasional insertion of natural philosophical considerations. Accordingly, Regius focused mostly on the conditions of health and the explanation of bodily function in his physiologia. In any case, he certainly had some unpublished work at his disposal. So besides sending to Descartes a uh, compendium physicum and announcing him a Prodromus Nove Philosophiae, in February 1642, Regius published a response against the criticism that Voetius and his student Lambertus van de Waterlet moved to the new philosophy <clears throat> at the end of uh, 1641. So in his response, Regius refers both to Descartes' Le Monde, at the time still unpublished, and to his own Physica Fundamenta as sources of explanation in a broad number of natural philosophical topics. So I quote in the third, well, third text. <clears throat> the quote, uh, according to Regius, even if we cannot still explain specifically all the mysteries of nature with our principles, the matter is however such as it is manifest to those who saw the word of the prince of our philosophy, namely Descartes, or were instructed with our um, physica fundamenta, that heaven and earth, fixed star, planets, comets, sea apps, salt, meteors, magnet, the operations of plants and animals, light, colors, and innumerable other qualities of natural things are already perfectly understood uh, by us, <coughs> understood by us. <coughs> Sign of quotation. And notably such uh, list includes topics not dealt with in Descartes' Le Monde, namely the explanation of salt and meteors, which however can be found in Descartes' Meteora, and the topic of magnetism, plants and animals, which are not treated by Descartes in his Le Monde, or in his uh, published, published text in early uh, 1642. So at this point, more direct insights on the contents of Regius and written treatise are to be found in uh, uh, Martin Schock and Miranda Methodus published in 1643. And it was uh, Voetsu students Waterlet, who, as reconstructed by Eric Jambos, in July 1642, personally provided Shaw with, uh, so I quote from the fourth text. So, uh, Vatterlight gave Shaw uh, excerpts from the dictation and thesis of Regius and written by Vatterlight himself, namely with dictations from his lecture of someone addicted to Cartesian philosophy. So this was, this was according to a defensive memory written by Schock in summer uh, 1645 and to his Modestia et Necessaria Defensio of the following years here at the time in which when he was uh, engaged in a legal and intellectual quarrel over the authorship of the Amiranda Methodus itself. So according to Martin Schock on uh, 17 July 1642, Boetius during a lunch proposed him to write a treatise against Descartes, informing him that Vatterlight was going to provide him with the sources necessary for this task. And on the same day, Vatterlight came and pressed Shock to help Voetius, while on the following morning, he brought him the required sources. Uh, four days after, upon Vatterlight's insistence, Shock visited Voetius at his house where he could read the first part of Descartes' Discours de la Méthode, which was translated from French by Johann van Schurman, brother of Anna Maria van Schurman. And uh, actually such materials are at present not uh, retrievable. Actually, it may be that Schock used them as evidences in his trial at Utrecht. <clears throat> so to the city uh, magistrates to which he delivered defensive materials in May 1647, 
and after a sentence against him was given in 1649, he appealed to the to the Eiger Court of Utrecht, but no further traces of the materials could be found so far. So we can now rely on the excerpts from Regius Dictata or Cogitata, provided by Schock himself in his Admiranda Methodus. And these fragments can be, I summarize them in uh, this table. So basically I made a comparison between the, uh, well, I, I gave a sh short description of the, um, of the fragments and then I identified the, um, where Regius actually put them on print, I mean, used them in published texts and uh, tried to find out the actual uh, sources. So <clears throat> the first fragment is a statement about the necessity of uh, abandon scholastic principle. Then we have a fragment on Ptolemaic and Ticonic system that uh, contradicts mechanical philosophy. And according to Schock, there were this fragment was in a chapter called uh, The Mundo. Well, uh, then we have a fragment on uh, uh, the parts of the clock as essential parts of the clock uh, itself. And this was a topic dealt with in his Regius Responsio. Then we have a praise of the, um, the, the principle of uh, Descartes philosophy, a definition, a class, quite classical definition of figuras terminatio extensionis, the definition of the substantiality of uh, matter, the differentiation between imperceptible and perceptible parts of matter, uh, the comparison of uh, perceptible and perceptible part to the wire of wool. <clears throat> and then the explanation of magnetism as the effect of a magnetic exhalation from the earth to the poles, and an explanation of sea tides as the effect of the pressure of subtle matter between the earth and the moon. And in fact, the most part of the fragments from Regius Dictata can be found also uh, in Regius text printed in Regius printed text appeared before 1643. Notably, such contents, however, exceed in two key topics, the explanation of magnetism and that of tides. So in the latter case, that of tides, Regius explanation is evidently based on Descartes account as provided in Le Monde, whose manuscript was read by Regius in uh, mid-1641. The explanation of magnetism, however, seemed to have been devised by Regius in a way completely independent from the cards. Well, not so completely, but substantially independent, let's say. The card would develop and publish his theory only in uh, 1643 and 1644 in his uh, Principia Philosophia. Regius, on the contrary, had likely developed his theory of magnetism as early as in 1639. Indeed, on, in July 1639, he was protagonist of a clash which occurred during the Progrado Disputation of Florenzo Schuil, at the time a student of the Aristotelian professor Arnold Sengwer. And the text of the disputation is now lost. However, the narratio historico di Querel d'Utrecht, uh, so the famous clash between Descartes, Reus, uh, Voetio, occurred in uh, uh, from the end of 1641. Actually, the Narratio Historica reports that during the disputation, the opponents attacked uh, Schuil's explanation of magnetism as reverting to an occult quality. The opponents, certainly a student of Regius, did so on the basis of the so-called new philosophy. And at that point, Regius himself attacked Sengwert and declared the triumph of the opponents even, even before Schuil's reply. Yet, according to all the professor, uh, she will then successfully rebuke all the objections. And then in May 1641, Descartes expressed his disagreement with an explanation that he found in a draft version of Regius Physiologia that Regius sent in, lab labeling um, Regius explanation, which is now lost. 
<clears throat> as still not fully certain and is discouraged reduced to include it in the final printed text where indeed it is absent. And eventually Regius explanation of magnetins was made public in the expert uh, excerpts uh, pro published by Shock, according to which uh, I quote in the fifth text. So among uh, opaque stones, uh, magnet is admirable, was operation do not take place by attraction, but by the circular thrust of magnetic bodies due to the force of a magnetic exhalation which exhales from the earth, from the body of the earth towards north or, and south. Actually, the source of such an explanation was as uh, declared by Regius himself in his Fundamenta Physices, which appeared in 1646, was Plato Timaeus, which Regius read through uh, the commentary of Galen. So in chapter seven of his Fundamenta Physices, Regius proposed a Cartesian theory of magnetism <clears throat> based on the idea of screwed particles flowing from one pole to the other one. And in presenting this theory, he however vindicates his originality on this matter by remarking that, as I quote in the next text, from this, so from his explanation that he provided, uh, it is evident that it is true that the theory of Plato, uh, stating according to our Galen on the Timaeus, that the magnet does not act by attraction but by circular thrust. These, to say, th to say things as they are, first gave me the occasion to investigate and to propose the cause of magnetic operations already many years ago. End of quotation. Actually, in his Timaeus, Plato does not provide a theory of magnetism as such. Rater reclaims that the phenomena of magnetism and attraction can be explained through the principle of uh, circular thrust or uh, circumpulsion. So I quote from Plato in the next text, text. <clears throat> according to Plato, the marvels that are observed about the attraction of amber and the Heraclean stones. In none of these cases is there an attraction, but he who investigates rightly will find that such wonderful phenomena, phenomena are attributable to the combination of certain conditions, the non-existence of a vacuum, the fact that objects push one another around, and that they change places, passing severally into their po proper position as they are divided or combined." End of quotation. Actually, such a principle, so the principle of uh, circular thrust, is chiefly used by Plato shortly before this discussion of magnetism to explain respiration. According to his theory of respiration, when we dilate the thorax, we push some external air which cannot move but towards our lungs, through mouth, mouth and nose, as every external place is full. So I quote again from Plato in the next text. So seeing that there is no such a thing as a vacuum into which any of those things which are moved can enter, and the breath is carried from us into the external air, it does not go into a vacant space, but passes its neighbor out of its place. <clears throat> And that which is thrust out in turn drives out its neighbor. And in this way, everything of necessity at last comes around to that place from whence the breath come forth, came forth and enters in there and following the breath fills up the vacant space. And this goes on like the rotation of a wheel because there cannot be such a thing as a vacuum. Notably, such an explanation of respiration was employed by Regius as well in his account of respiration given in his Pro Circulatione Sanguinis, a disputation of 1640, so that Plato could have been a Regius source also with this regard, so with respect to respiration. And a partial commentary of Galen on the Timaeus can be found in the works of Galen published by the Junti in nine edition between uh, 1541 and 1625, namely the Fragmentum ex Quator Commentaris de Isquare Medice Dicta Sunt in Platonis Timeo, translated from Greek by Antonio Cataldino. And in the Fragmentum, uh, 19 textus from Plat Plato's Timaeus are quoted along with Galen's commentary. And the last three textus are devoted to respiration, which Galen provides a discussion of the Dio Circular Trust 
and to magnetism on which Kaden rejects Plato's explanation. So Plato's treatment of magnetism is not dealt with in any other place of the corpus Calenicum, so that the fragmentum was most probably radius source. And the fact that Galen discusses both respiration and magnetism following the order of Plato discussion makes likely the idea that the Timaeus PS Galen commentary was also the source of radius uh, in respiration. And the same idea of circular trust in any case had been expressed also by another key source of radius, namely uh, in Lucretius de Rerum Natura. According to Lucretius, when a magnet is close to a piece of iron, the magnetic exhalations emanate from the lodestone, expel the air in between the two bodies. This generates a circular thrust of air and the two bodies come uh, close to each other. However, neither Plato nor Lucretius provided a, an explanation of terrestrial magnetism based on the idea of um, particles exhaling from the body of the Earth. <clears throat> Back to Regius times, uh, Gilbert, who availed the idea that the world heart is a magnet in his De Magnete, criticized Plato's idea of circular trust, and this idea was then rejected also by Niccolò Cabello in his Philosophia Magnetica of 1629, and by Athanasius Kircher in his Ars Magnesia of 1631. Namely, the main works on magnetism appeared in the early 17th century. In particular, in chapter three of his De Magnete, Gilbert quotes Plato's Timaeus through Galen's commentary and explain magnetism in terms of animation of nature. Kircher, in turn, rejects the theory of circular trust in his Arsa Magnesia and relies on Gilbert's theory, which is extensively quoted at the beginning of his treatise. And Kircher was eventually to present his theory of magnetism in his uh, Magnes Sive de Arte Magnetica of 1641, Mm, while Cabello, in his Philosophia Magnetica, adopted an Aristotelian theory of magnetism, explaining it as an effect of an alteration of the form of magnetic bodies. Um, so that we may infer that Regius' explanation was original, even if uh, developing on the theory of circular trust and uh, on the theory of that the Earth is somehow a, a magnetic body. Mm, and uh, let's say after radius, an explanation of magnetism as due to the particles coming from the body of the earth was presented by Descartes in his Principia Philosophiae. And Descartes' theories of magnetism is based, like uh, the one proposed uh, by radius in his Fundamenta Physices, so after the appearance of uh, the Principia Philosophiae, on the idea of scribed particles, the particle striate coming from heavens entering the body of the earth through a pole, exiting from another pole, and then coming back through the atmosphere to the first pole, forming a sort of vortex. As such particles pass through uh, lodestones, they can orient them, the lodestone, to the north or to the south. And also these particles can make lodestone apparently attracting each other or other bodies like pieces of iron. And they do so expelling the air in between man magnets and other bodies so that such bodies are, push are pushed towards each other by the surrounding air, namely by a process of circular thrust uh, given the plenum. Notably, we do find Descartes' first substantial treatment of a theory of magnetism only in a letter to Constantine Huygens of 24 May 1643, where it is presented a sketch of the theory later presented in the Principia, and this theory was put on paper by Descartes for the sake of the completion of this triatize. Did it is in the, in the last part. <clears throat> and it was developed from January to December, 1643. Descartes declared that he started to work on the section of the Principia concerning magnetism in a letter to Huygens of 5 January, 1643. And he completed this section only one year later as stated in a letter to Polo of 1st January, 1644. Actually, Descartes has had already considered the problem of magnetism in his regular direction in Mingeni without providing, in any case, an explanation, as well as in his correspondence. 
For instance, in a letter to Mersenov, uh, November 1630, declared that his experiences with magnet are consistent with the theories of his Le Monde, but uh, no more insights are provided. And 10 years later, uh, in a letter to Mersenov, 15 September 1640, will declare that the properties of magnetism depend on subtle matter, but no insights are provided. Radius, in turn, had been first discouraged uh, to put on print this theory of magnetism by Descartes himself, <clears throat> also the, uh, in uh, 1641, and Descartes also dissuaded him in April 1641 to publish his textbook as it lay, as uh, it lay the, the, the due demonstrations, as I uh, stated before. And then Regius was anticipated by Descartes in publishing a treatise encompassing a complete new philosophy, as his Fundamenta Physicis appeared only in 1646. Actually, for sure, Descartes had theoretical reasons in dissuading Regius from, publishing, from his publishing plans. And after all, he published his, his Principia Philosophiae well after 1641, when Regius Compendium Physicum was ready and when he announced Descartes' his plan to publish a Prodromus Nove Philosophia. So actually Descartes uh, did not really engage a race with Regius in publishing a treatise in natural philosophy. In any case, as suggested by Theofer Beck, I quote, uh, I quote from Theofer Beck, Descartes' main reason for opposing Regius' plans was probably because if they had come to pass, Regius would have cut the ground from under Descartes' feet, end of quotation. So I will add at least in the long, in the long term. Um, <clears throat> moreover, the very case of magnetism, a topic notably absent from Descartes' Mon, shows that Regius could have, to some extent, exerted a certain influence on Descartes since the idea of magnetic isolation coming from the body of the earth had been deployed for the first time by Regius. At the same time, we cannot exclude that Descartes could have shared some idea, some of his ideas with Regius, uh, even if at an undeveloped stage, so that the influence could have been, let's say, reciprocal. So let's say this kind of question with all solution can be only tentative. And uh, also let, let aside a possible reconstruction of the contents and structure of Regius Dictata by means of a comparison of his Fundamenta Physices with his previously published text and with, with Descartes' Principia Philosophia. Um, it's worth to include by mentioning that the contents of Regius Dictata came to be at the center of the quarrel over Regius' originality with respect to Descartes raised by the publication of his Fundamenta Physices. So uh, from 1646 onwards. So in the midst of his quarrel with Descartes, Regius student Petrus Fassener wrote in his preface to Regius Brevis Explicatio Mentis Humane of, this, of 1648, that Regius had completed on the only basis of Descartes' uh, essays, a natural philosophical theory concerning, so I quote uh, from the next text, the form and matter of natural things, human mind, the laws of movement, the movements of animals, the forces of machines, the vortices of heavens, the sun and fixed stars, the yearly and daily movement of planets, the tides of the sea, the comets, the, comets, the excitation of magnet by vertical exhalation, the nature of meteors, minerals, plants, beasts, men, and many other physiological and medical things, both theoretical and practical, not read in any author. Actually, this is a list of topics roughly matching the one provided by Regius in his uh, Responsio, where, however, due credit was given also to Descartes' Le Monde, which was a mystical the source of Regius' cosmology and theory of tides. Uh, in fact, 20 years later, namely in more quiet times, let's say, in the preface uh, to Regius' uh, third edition of the Fundamenta Medica in 1668, Regius mentioned Descartes' pray, praise of him as given in the Epistola Dine, from which I start, um, 
and motivates such praise by Descartes as Descartes who read his unwritten Cogitata Physica. So I quote from the next text. According to Regius, Descartes himself, having seen my Cogitata Physica, by which I had described man, magnet, sea apps, and all the remaining universality of things, publicly testified in his uh, Epistola Dine that, uh, so quoting from Descartes, as I Regius saw his dioptrics and meteors, at the time when they only, uh, around the year 1637, came forth together with the Discours de la Méthode, I Regius was of such a sagacity that within a few months I prepared a complete physiology. Actually, the list of topics give, given by Regius in uh, 1668, so man, magnet, sea apps, is far more limited than that of Vassenar of 20 years before and includes the broad field of medical physiology, namely the theory of man, and the two main topics dealt with the excerpts provided by Schott in uh, 1643, namely C, Epps, and Magnetins, which were absent from Regius, uh, the time published Physiologia. Actually, the treatment of C. Epps might date the Cogitata Physica mentioned by uh, Regius in 1668, as read by Descartes uh, in 1641 1642, namely after Regius' direct acquaintance with Descartes Le Monde, which inspired the theory of tides. However, we can still date such Cogitata to the few months mentioned by Descartes, namely to. Um, 1637-1638, uh, and make sense of Regius' more sober vindication of his originality by hypothesizing that Regius started to deal with this topic, namely with the topic of tides, even before reading Descartes' Le Monde uh, in, 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 uh, in 1641. Indeed, Regius could have known some of the contents of Descartes' Le Monde um, from Reneri, so without reading it uh, directly. Actually, Renéri assisted Descartes during the writing of Lemon. So, in this sense, Regius could have independently provided that, nevertheless, Cartesian inspired theory of Epps in his, uh, of tides in his early lectures in the same way as he proposed the physiology, roughly based on Descartes published text, namely on the uh, essays. So, thank you.